how much do you trust this with your data? I venture to say probably not that much, which is why everyone always recommends to have a proper backup. However, we often get caught up in the offsite aspect of this. What if we can incorporate the reliability of cloud in a way that doesn't actually break the bank? Intrigued? Well, stick around because that's exactly what we're diving into today. But quickly, let's address the elephant in the room, cloud storage. That's always expensive, right? Well, hold on, because that's where Backblaze comes into play. And just to be clear, this isn't a sponsored video. I just genuinely believe in the value that Backblaze offers. So now you might be wondering why did I choose and recommend Backblaze over the dozens of other cloud providers out there? Let me show you why it's an excellent choice, especially if you're on a budget. Backblaze B2 is an S3 compatible cloud storage layer with the same performance as other providers at one fifth the cost. No hidden fees, no asterisks, plain and simple. They are also very transparent about their data storage practices, offering regular reports and clear privacy policies. It builds trust and in the world of data, trust is critical. And finally, the last reason I recommend Backblaze is because of their vault architecture. It calculates their durability at 11 nines, which is similar to Amazon S3, and conceptually, this means if you store 1 million objects in Backblaze for 10 million years, you would expect to only lose one file. This durability is so high that there's a higher likelihood of an asteroid destroying the Earth in that same timeline. So you can trust your data is safe. And in this video, we're going to set up our TrueNAS server to offsite your data. We're going to talk about Backblaze account creation, cost calculation, creating the B2 bucket, and API keys, which are gonna be needed for TrueNAS to access your Backblaze account. So let's talk a little bit about Backblaze account pricing before we get started creating our account. According to Backblaze, you're around one fifth as cheap as Amazon S3. And as you can see from here, we're not quite at that number, but that's mostly due to our monthly downloads and not having a fee associated to it. So if we were to up this to 500 terabytes of monthly downloads, as you can see, Backblaze is significantly cheaper than one fifth compared to Amazon S3. So now if we look at a more reasonable number for our storage here, we're going to adjust it down to 10 terabytes. So now our monthly download is going to be very minimal as we're not going to be restoring from Backblaze all that often. So let's put this at one. So as you can see, it's about $720 a year, which is about $6 per terabyte per month. And this equates to about what they say, $6 per terabyte per month. Now, if we updated this to do a restore every month, you're also fine, as Backblaze allows you to have three times the amount of data stored downloaded every month. So you could even do this three times and your price would still be the same, whereas every other provider will go up in price. So now that we know we don't have to worry about our pricing, let's take a look at creating an account. And as you notice, they have a promotion that's been going on since I've been using Backblaze, which is the first 10 gigabytes are free. Now, all you would do here is enter in a username and password that you want to use for your account. But the biggest thing here is this region dropdown. This region dropdown is immutable, meaning that you cannot change this. So if you create an account on the West Coast and you're on the East Coast, you will have to recreate a new account. Now, this is fine because you can also set up cross-site replication between the two regions. However, it's important to know that if you only create one account, you want to have it as close as possible to your data. This way, your offsite backups can complete fast and have less latency when restoring. So one of the first things we want to do when we get logged into Backblaze is actually verify our email and turn on two-factor authentication. Once you verify your email and set up multi-factor, you're going to click on buckets on the left and then create a new bucket. Now this bucket name has to be unique among all of the buckets out there for Backblaze. So for me, I'm going to name it PE YouTube Demo. Once you have your bucket created, you're going to click on Applications Keys on the left. We're going to scroll past the master application key as we do not want to use this as it has account-wide permissions. We're going to click Add a new application key. And for this, we're going to type TrueNAS as the application key name. And then we're going to select that we only wanted to access our bucket. Since we're going to be using a sync policy for our TrueNAS device, I'm going to leave the key as read and write access. I'm also going to allow the application key to list all of the bucket names. Since we're going to be using TrueNAS to set this up, I do not want to add an optional prefix 
or a duration in seconds, as this can be controlled through TrueNAS itself. Once we have all these settings set, we're going to hit Create New Key. Once created, you'll be shown a key ID and an application key. It's very important to copy all three of these as when you hit copy to keyboard, it only copies the application key. At the end of this video, I'm going to be deleting these keys so they won't be available anymore. So now that we have our bucket set up, I've gone ahead and logged into TrueNAS. I've already created a TrueNAS data set that we can use for this demo as well and shared it out on SMB. Inside of the share, I've created a file called important data. Inside of this file, we have our super secret stuff that we want to have stored on an offsite backup. So now let's show you how to create that offsite backup. Inside of TrueNAS, we're going to create a new set of credentials used for backups. So we're going to go to credentials and create backup credentials. Inside of these credentials, you can already see my existing Backblaze B2 credentials. We're going to click add in cloud credentials and change our provider from storage IX to Backblaze. We're also going to change the name for our Backblaze credentials to be Backblaze B2 and then the region. In my case, it will be East. So now using the key ID and the application key that we grabbed earlier, we're going to paste them into our authentication section. Once we've completed this, we're going to hit verify credential. This will reach out to Backblaze and make sure our credentials are valid. Finally, we're going to hit save. Now that we have our credentials set up, we're going to click on data protection and then add a cloud sync task. I'm going to create a new cloud sync task by selecting add. For my task description, I'm going to put Backblaze B2 and then East, which is my region that I created my account in. I'm going to modify the direction to be a push direction, which means I'm going to be pushing my data locally to a remote source. And then I'm going to change the transfer mode. I want to change this to sync. So that way, if I delete something locally, it'll be deleted from Backblaze. I'm going to be modifying which files I offsite. So I'm going to uncheck the mount directory and I'm going to select my pragmatic engineering YouTube demo folder. And then I'm going to select my credential here at the top right. This will be our Backblaze B2 East credential that we created earlier. And we're going to select the bucket from that credential set. We also want to add a folder here. This means that we'll be backing up to the root of the Backblaze bucket. So you can just select this folder and this will give you a root folder. Now for my schedule, I don't want to back up offsite every day. Instead, I want to do it every other day at midnight. So I'm going to create a cron that allows us to back up offsite every other day at a designated time. I'm going to modify the preset here from hourly to daily, which gives us a zero hour, AKA midnight. And I'm going to modify the days of the month so that it's every other day. This will allow us to select any day of the month that's between two and 30, and then it's divisible by two. This means it'll back up on every even day of the month. So eight, 10 and 12, 14 and so on. Once we've modified this, we're going to select done and then we're going to scroll to the bottom and hit save. Now you can see our backup job has been created, but it's in a pending state. So I want to expand this job and select run now. Once it has been completed, you can actually click on the status to view the logs and see that our important data.txt has been transferred off to Backblaze. Inside of Backblaze, you'll be able to select Browse Files on the left. Once inside of Files, you'll be able to select the bucket that you created earlier, and then you'll be able to see the files that you have uploaded. If you do not see your files, go ahead and click this Refresh button here next to the Buckets, which will refresh the bucket tree on Backblaze. This will allow you to see files that may have not been updated in the UI yet. So now we can select our file, and hit download to retrieve our file and confirm that we've successfully synced our file up to Backblaze. So there you have it. We built our bulletproof budget-friendly backup system using TrueNAS and Backblaze B2. If you've configured offsite backups in a different way or are using a different provider, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. And if you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech wisdom.